Okay, guys, this is the problems that we didn't get to on our study guide. Um, I'm going to do it in three parts. The first one, I'm just going to look at 24 and 25. So if you did do these with me, you might want to skip this uh, first video. Um, 24 is about graphing and finding those critical points on the graph. Um, <clears throat> We're going to start with just talking about the degree. That leading term gives me two pieces of information. So if I multiplied all of this out, I would have x times x squared. So I have a positive ax to the third. The first piece of information that gives me is my end behavior. Positive and odd gives me right side up, left side down. Right is going to positive infinity and left side is going to negative infinity. And I went ahead and I um, put this into Desmos. If you are practicing on some of these problems out of your textbook, um, you might want to pull up Desmos and um, D-E-S-M-O-S. It's a graphing calculator. You can put the polynomials in and get a visual of the graph and what exactly it's going to look like. And I think that helps to confirm some of our information as we're, as we're gathering it. All right, the degree is 3. The other piece of information that's going to give me is the turning points. Remember, turning points is the degree minus 1. So 3 minus 1 gives me a 2. So I know that my graph should make two different terms. And again, I can look at my graph from Desmos and confirm. All right, um, then we're going to talk about the x and the y-intercepts. And remember, when you're looking for your x-intercept, y is 0. And when you're looking for your y-intercept, x is 0. So I'm going to start with x plus 1 equals 0. There's my y being 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. So that's going to give me a negative 1, 0 and a 3, 0. For my y-intercept, if x is 0, I'm going to say 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 3 squared. That gives me a 1 times 9, so my y-intercept is 0, 9. All right, so let's look at them over here. I have there's my negative 1, 0, my 3, 0, and my 0, 9. So those are those three points. Um, now about the turns. If you look at your parentheses, remember the degree on the parentheses are called the multiplicity. Odd says cross. Even says touch. 3 squared. That's exponent is even. It touched and turned around. Negative 1 was 1. So it crossed. Okay. Again, it's nice to be able to confirm your information that you're gathering from a picture in Desmos is a good, a nice graphing calculator. Um, I'm going to get a couple of points along here. I don't, I have, I don't have much space between negative 1 and 0, but I do between 0 and 3. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find out what would I get for f of 1 here and f of 2, just to make sure that my graph is going to be have some good accuracy to it. So I'm just going to plug them in. 1 plus 1. 
1 minus 3 squared. 1 plus 1 gives me a 2 times a negative 2 squared. That's going to give me an 8. And if I look at my graph, 1, 8, confirmed. All right, what about 2? I'm going to have 2 plus 1 times 2 minus 3 squared. So that's going to give me 3 times negative 1 squared, which is going to give me a 3. So at 2, 3, kind of make sure that I am graphing it well. Okay. All right, I'm going to do 25. Same information again. I went on Desmos, plugged it in so that I could get a visual of what my graph should be looking like and confirming my information. So if I multiplied all of this out, this time I have an x squared times an x times an x, so that's going to give me an x to the fourth. But I have a negative 1 here. So this being even tells me I'm going to have that parabola, but my coefficient being odd tells me that my end behavior, both on the left and the right, are going to head to negative infinity. Okay, and I can look and see that that's right. I also have a degree of 4, and the degree minus 1 gives me my number of terms. So I should be looking at three different terms. I have one here, here, and here. So that's confirmed. All right, I'm going to look for my x and y intercepts. Um, negative 1x equals 0 gives me that x equals 0. And that's kind of nice because that's a 2 for if my x is 0 when y is 0, well, then y is 0 when x is 0. So I have 0, 0 for both the x and the y intercepts. x minus 1 equals 0, 1, 0. x plus 3 equals 0, negative 3, 0. There's my intercepts. A little bit easier because I have both x and y there at the origin and my 1. Okay, I do need some help in getting up my height. Again, that's going to be a calculus problem, getting the derivative, but we're going to get some points in between. And I'm actually going to go after three of them this time. I'm going to do f. of negative 2, f of negative 1, and f of 0.5. I'm going to look for here, here, and in the middle. So I'm going to have negative 2. That's going to give me a negative, negative 2 squared. Kind of trying to get you out of my way here. Well, let's move these this way. So negative, negative 2 squared. times negative 2 minus 1, times negative 2 plus 3. Plugging in my negative 2's up here. All right, that's going to give me a negative 4, times negative 3, times 1, giving me a 12. So at negative 2, I'm going to 12 up there. 
negative, negative 1 squared, negative 1 minus 1, negative 1 plus 3, negative 1 times negative 2 times 2. That's going to give me a negative 1, 4. And then at the point 5, I'm looking for some accuracy right here. I don't want to pull this all the way up to here if it only goes that low. So I'm going to say negative 0.5 squared times 0.5 minus 1 times 0.5 plus 3. Okay. Um... 0.5 squared is going to be 0.25. So I got a negative 0.25 times a negative 0.5 times 3.5. And I'm going to take that and put it in the calculator. And I'm getting 0. 0.435. I'm sorry, 0. 0.4375. So, yeah, about halfway up. And that helps me get these three points for accuracy of my graph. Your critical points are going to be those intercepts knowing when it turns, when it crosses, um, and knowing that end behavior. Okay, that's I'm going to close this video, and then I'm going to look at a part two.